Are you in your 50s or early 60s and looking to buy an adventure bike to go off-road for the first time? Many of us have had the same thought. We've been watching YouTube, we've seen the BMW safaris, we've watched Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman and thought, how hard can it be? Most of those blokes are my age. And I've been riding road bikes all my life. Surely it's just the same but with knobby tyres for the dirt. Well, if you're thinking this, we need to talk. The rest of you, you can get back to TikTok. This video is for the older folks. G'day and welcome back to Steve's Bikes. Let me share with you my experience of exactly that scenario. I was age 64 and I'd never ridden off-road before other than some trail riding in Wales and I decided, how hard can it be? Surely it's just like road riding but with knobby tyres for the dirt. So I went and bought myself a big BMW F850 GS Adventure. I did think to myself, those 1250s look amazing, but if I drop it, I really might struggle to pick it up. So my compromise was the 850. My objective was to do a BMW Safari before I was too old. I quickly learned that adventure riding off-road is a completely different skill set to riding on-road. Initially, I went out a few times by myself, and it wasn't long before I got myself in a bit of trouble and had to call on some mates to come and help me out. This was primarily due to me having absolutely no idea what I was doing, and also starting on a tall, heavy bike for a person of my age. Three years later, I'm sort of growing into the 850 now, however it's taken a lot of deliberate effort through attending the BMW GS off-road training and also going on several organised rides where I've lifted my skills and learned to handle the big bike. If you're still determined to get an adventure bike, then good on you. Here's a few things I've picked up that I thought I should share. Riding off-road is definitely nothing like riding on-road. It's a low traction environment. You will see riders on YouTube sliding their bike around corners in the dirt. Speed comes later. First, build technique and confidence. On the road, you're leaning with the bike with your weight on the lower side of the bike. Off-road, when cornering, you keep your body vertical to the ground, lean the bike and transfer your weight to the higher side of the bike. The trick to off-road, keeping myself completely vertical and tipping the bike. I'm exaggerating it for you, but you get the gist. I've had some injuries. All of the accidents I've had though have been at low speed. Significantly, the most serious is where I shredded a shoulder tendon when I stalled on a hill and couldn't recover, so I fell heavily onto my right shoulder. So another key skill that I've picked up is maintaining momentum. Momentum is that magic speed somewhere between too slow and too fast. It's that sweet spot where the bike will carry you over an obstacle without stopping or becoming airborne. What I've realised, and in my opinion, for a first time older rider off-road, a big BMW 1250 or an 850 are too large as starter bikes. Something around a 300cc is good for an older rider. We buy big BMWs and other brands because we can afford them. Also, the dream of an adventure ride and camping out really appeals as you approach retirement. What did I say? I said it's the open road, okay? Who knows where we're going to be? I know where we're going to be. Dudley hooked me up. Check out this thing. It's a GPS in my phone now. Let's look at oh, that thing. Kid, let me see that. Yeah. Cool. Look at that. What are you? Hey, numb nuts! What'd you do that for? For the good of the trip. You don't need a GPS oh. to discover America. You need a bike and you need the road, okay? The big bikes travel well on the highway too. But if you were really going to spend serious time off-road, they can be heavy to manoeuvre. Many BMW GS motorbikes never go off-road. They're like the Toyota Land Cruiser that runs the kids to school in Australia. We call them two-rack taxis. They never ever get dirty. 
Now, there is nothing wrong with riding your bike like that, but that's not what I wanted to do. I decided that the bike is fit for purpose, and if it gets knocked around or scratched, then that's part of the decision to do adventure riding. If your intention is to only do the occasional easy off-road ride, then go ahead and get yourself a 1250 or a Tenere 700 or a large KTM. But if you're going to be a regular dirt rider and go off-road often, consider starting on a smaller bike. However, having said that, I've watched other guys on 1250s and bikes bigger than mine do the same training I've done, cross rivers, get through sand, and they seem perfectly happy with their choice. Probably like yourself, I've watched a lot of off-road adventure riding on YouTube. I've undertaken some self-practice and I've also got formal training. I signed up with GS Off-Road Training here in Australia. I did their beginners class and then their master class before I did the 2020 BMW Safari. On Safari though, I found my, that my skills and confidence were still lacking. I'm looking at this causeway and I'm thinking, I know my limits <laughs> and I'm going to get one of the uh, BMW Safari guys to take my bike across. I don't think there's any shame in that. The BMW team saw that too and gave me a voucher to redo the masterclass again, which I did in 2021. The best way to improve your off-road skills is to get out there with a group of capable fellow riders or book yourself into an organised ride. I've been out on several rides with Ride ADV and also Ride 360. You can see some of my other rides on this channel. Riding with these groups enables you to scare yourself in a safe environment with all the mechanical, technical and medical support you might need. I've also found that it's important to be able to get your feet firmly on the ground. BMW training will show you the one foot technique where you can ride a tall bike by stopping with just one foot on the ground. I can't touch the ground. If you make this a natural reaction just like changing the gears, pulling the clutch so you don't even think about it, it just eliminates that. They don't want to deter you from buying a big bike. However, I've observed that taller riders have a real advantage in creeks and sand by being able to paddle across and put both feet down. When the BMW is in enduro pro mode, it allows the rear wheel to lock up and also dampens traction control so you can get some rear wheel spin and lock up the rear wheel. However, enduro pro mode also raises the suspension by a few centimetres. I've been experimenting recently by leaving the bike in road mode where you have lower suspension and still have front wheel ABS. Then I turn off DTC traction control. I'm still too slow on the dirt. I realise I need to relax and increase my confidence cornering. This is something I'm working on. I've also learned not to ride alone. If you get yourself in trouble at my age, the 850 is a struggle to lift as it lies very flat on the ground. So I was coming through this puddle and I had a wee accident. <laughs> I was uh, accelerating to keep moving and the bike sort of went off course and before I knew it, I was in the bush. The BMW 1250s with the wide boxer engine are surprisingly easier to grab lift. The grab the brake. The bike up. Choice of luggage is important too if you're going on organised rides. It's tempting if you're buying a BMW to buy the BMW aluminium panniers. These are sturdy and really look the part. However, on a BMW Safari, the organisers can be reluctant to carry these for you and they tell me that owners often complain if the panniers get scratched. I chose to get a small soft top box for carrying water and camera gear and I have a soft luggage bag that I attach with Oki straps when I'm travelling. This can be thrown in the back of a truck without any fear of damage. To improve my off-road skills I've recently purchased a Teleria Sting electric motorbike. Well that wasn't quite such a good idea. <laughs> the Sting weighs 63 kilograms and it performs like a 125cc dirt bike. 
I can throw it around. I can get up to 70 kilometers per hour and slide in the sand and get airborne in ways I would not attempt on the 850. I can also go off-road by myself on the Sting as I know I can recover it from almost any situation. I also carry a personal locator beacon and a cell phone in case I get in trouble. Here's a few final points. I got to do the BMW Safari in 2020 and I will do another one soon. Be aware though that most days are 300 kilometers or more. They're not necessarily technically too hard, but you need to manage your fatigue. Be sure and protect your hearing too. At my age, I need hearing aids these days, and I'm sure it is from a lifetime of riding motorcycles without using hearing protection. And don't forget to remove the hearing aids. The wind noise in your helmet can be as loud as a jet engine. So don't make it worse by riding off-road without hearing protection. Also, get yourself some motocross boots. I originally brought all of the BMW Safari suit gear, but made the mistake many people do, and brought comfortable riding boots. If you're going to be doing some rough off-road dirt riding, you really need strong, supportive motocross boots. These are not particularly comfortable for long walks, but they are statistically proven to save your ankles and feet. I'm replacing my softer boots after experiencing an injury. Also, if you think you need to be a big burly person to ride off-road, then that is just not the case. Have a look at this video of Abby from Ride ADV. I'm told Abby is 58 kilograms and she can very confidently throw a Yamaha Tenere 700 around as if it's a lightweight dirt bike. So in summary, I have no major regrets about buying the BMW F850 GS Adventure. As I mentioned, I've sort of grown into it. However, with hindsight, if I'd started with a smaller 300cc Honda, for instance, I'm sure I would have built up my off-road skills much sooner. I could have then traded in the smaller bike and got a bigger BMW knowing I could handle it. Three years later, I'm just an average rider, still a bit slow and near the back of the pack most of the time. But these are things I'm working on. But three years ago, mud, sand and river crossings terrified me. And now I'm confident enough to give them a go as long as I've got a support team with me. So there's a few things to think about. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and let's ride.